the story of the Stetson is as much about a man as it is about a hat. John Batterson Stetson turned a battle with the wilderness into an iconic American business that has endured for 150 years. Relying on resourcefulness and discovering in himself true entrepreneurship, this young man responded to a need and seized an opportunity. In the end, creating not only a premium product, but also a company founded on respect and value. In 1860, 30-year-old Stetson traveled west from his home state of New Jersey, having been advised that open air would ease his tuberculosis. Along the way, he decided to head to Colorado, hoping to strike it rich as a gold miner. The elements were harsh, air was cold, the rain pelting. No garment that he and his fellow travelers owned could protect them from the brutal weather. So, Stetson had an idea. He'd grown up with a father who ran a successful hat company. It's been said George Washington was a customer. And while the younger Stetson had no intention of becoming a hatter himself, he had learned the trade as a child. He knew how to make a felt hat from animal fur, something that was plentiful out on the prairie. To save himself and his hunting companions, he gathered up as much rabbit fur as he could and used the primitive technique of wetting and pressing it until it was transformed into water repellent fabric. First, he made blankets, and then he crafted a hat in a style that was never seen before. A wide brim kept the rain off the face, and a tall crown allowed room for a warm pocket of air as insulation above the head. The hat could also be used to carry water. The story goes, a mule driver spotted the hat and bought it from Stetson for $5, marking his first sale. The boss of the plane's hat was born. With just $60 loaned to him by his older sister, he returned to the East Coast, bought tools and fur, rented a room that would become a factory, and hired two workers. He began producing hats, and when it came to selling them, thought differently about marketing than other manufacturers did in 1865. Most companies at the time were regional, but Stetson used the telegraph and railroad to build a national brand. His headquarters were in Philadelphia, but he had the idea to send one hat to each dealer in the Southwest, enticing them to order. And they did, 12 each. By 1889, Stetson won Best Hat at the Paris Exposition, emerging from the worldwide field of entries. Notable people began wearing the hat. Buffalo Bill, Calamity Chain, Will Rogers, and Annie Oakley were just a few. Not only did the company grow, it would become the largest hat factory in the world by 1900. By the 1920s, the company had become known for innovation and expertise and was making more than two million hats a year, including derbies, bowlers, top hats, and straw boaters. It began personalizing hats for senators and presidents and for other famous figures, including entertainers, a practice that continues today. The silent movie superstar Tom Mix, for instance, wore a 10-gallon Stetson, and when he traveled, brought along a stash of hats to give dignitaries whom he met around the world. The company was producing fedoras during this period, mostly dress hats distinguished from western hats by narrower brims and shorter crowns, noted as the hat worn by the FBI's Elliot Ness. During World War II, though, Stetson stopped making hats, instead taking on government defense contracts to support the war effort. The factories manufactured parachutes and safety belts and ran anti-espionage advertising campaign with the slogan, Keep it under your Stetson. After the war, hat production resumed, and with newfound prosperity, people who wanted to look the part knew they needed a Stetson. The hats represented a real investment for the working cowboy and a statement of success for the city dweller. 
The image was crystallized in Hollywood with actors such as Gene Autry, James Dean, and Roy Rogers popularizing the look. Stetson featured a host of big name stars in its magazine advertising with Bing Crosby, Bob Hope, Douglas Fairbanks, Ray Milan, and Robert Young wearing the hats with style and panache. During this time, the company also produced the most successful line of ladies' hats, collaborating with actresses Dorothy L'Amour, Carol Landis, and Susan Hayward. In 1955, 43 Stetson employees spent a year assembling the most labor-intensive hat ever crafted and the most expensive Western hat that the company ever produced. Made of beaver felt and trimmed with double-braided sterling silver and a solid gold longhorn steer head, it cost $1,500 at the time, the equivalent to over $13,000 today. The hat went on tour to Australia, Colombia, Germany, Mexico, New Zealand, and Japan. Back home, native Texan Lyndon B. Johnson wore a Stetson while in Congress and ultimately the White House. LBJ fancied the open road hat, a fur felt hat with a four inch cattleman crown, slightly rolled brim, and full satin lining. A hat that is still popular today. By the late 1960s though, Americans' taste for hats had dwindled, and Stetson was forced to begin closing its factories as the hat became an optional fashion accessory rather than a requirement for proper dress. The 1960s changed the way people thought about fashion and free expression. In the few factories that hadn't closed, Stetson added colorful hat brands, creative shapes, and wild feather arrangements to its hats, trying to keep up with the changing times and tastes. By 1971, though, the company had moved its operations from Philadelphia to St. Joe, Missouri, and altered its business strategy continuing in the hat business by the licensing arrangements with a number of manufacturers. This decade was the company's toughest financially. It wasn't until the early 1980s when the pop culture images of Urban Cowboy and Indiana Jones hit movie screens. The demand for hats picked up. Ronald Reagan, who had recently become president, favored a Stetson cowboy hat as his preferred headwear choice when out on his ranch in California, which became known as the Western White House. Factories ran three shifts around the clock seven days a week during this peak time. In 1986, Stetson moved part of its hat production from St. Joseph, Missouri to Garland, Texas, just east of Dallas, and continued to diversify, adding fragrance and eyeglasses to its mix of products. Here at home, country music stars latched onto the iconic brand, wearing Stetson when they performed. Singers such as Garth Brooks and Alan Jackson inspired others to adopt the look too, ushering in a renaissance of the hat in mainstream culture. Today, country music is linked with the Stetson. In 2004, the company moved the rest of production from St. Joe to Garland, Texas. What began in the Colorado Plains nearly 150 years ago as a way for a young man to stay warm and dry blossomed into an iconic industrial giant, a true American tale of innovation, perseverance, and adaptation. At its height in the 1920s, Stetson employed more than 5,000 people and occupied 25 buildings housing 32 acres of factory floor. John Stetson started a school, a hospital, and a building and loan society for his employees, making their lives as happy and easy as he could. In addition to medical benefits, the Stetson Company provided everything from medical clinics to baseball leagues, Christmas turkeys, and Americanization classes, all within the sprawling Stetson complex in Philadelphia. Stetson hats felt like an intimate family company, Today, the company in Texas produces a line of hats in hundreds of different styles and colors and is dedicated to classic styling and premium quality as it ever was. 
The hat remains not only a legendary symbol of culture and fashion, but also one of American spirit. <laughs>